G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday sort of afternoon here in Australia, so obviously Wednesday night, uh, stateside time, and the market is down a little bit. I mean, we were, you know, down a lot further, so it's been a bit of a recovery, but I'm just not sure that was the worst of it just yet. So again, today we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to focus more on something I did the other day about, let's say you got into the market recently and it just keeps dumping and you're just getting wrecked. And you're probably going, what do I do? How do I, you know, stay in this market? You don't want to just completely sell at a loss at the moment. And here's the way to kind of beat the system. It's called dollar cost averaging. So that's what we're going to look at. And it really does work. And I'm going to show you how it works. But first of all, let's have a look uh, at the market. So market's down 3.1%. Bitcoin dominance around 40% and ETH dominance, sorry, 45%. And ETH dominance around about sort of 16% and gas around about 17. So ETH, gas, GUI, whatever you want to call it. And that's because people are jumping in and out of stable coins at the moment and also jumping into altcoins, hoping that that was the bottom. And this is just a spring for us to continue to go up. We're all kind of hoping for the same thing. I'm just not so sure yet. So we'll have to wait and see. But first of all, let's have a look. In the last 24 hours, has anything done well, considering we're still in a downtrending market? All right, Anchor, nice, 28%. Clayton, 18%. Quant, 17%. Tron, 16%. Bitcoin Gold, 10%. Doge, 9.4%. The Graph, 7.3%. So we can see that there really were some, uh, you know, reasonable gains there. And any gains, you know, a good gain. Don't get me wrong. But what we need to do is look at the seven day still down over seven days so quite often you're going to see one day red one day green in these 24-hour charts even in a downwards trending market so <clears throat> excuse me this might be great today 10.4 percent but then tomorrow you're down by 15 16 percent so again for me at the moment i'd be very careful buying into any alts unless you're willing to suffer more pain and you're looking long term which again is something we're going to look at if you're dollar cost averaging into them okay you know great and we'll have a look at how to dollar cost average but just we need to remember bitcoin is the most stable of all the cryptos not stable coins stable coins are stable they're somewhere around about a dollar sometimes they get up to a dollar five sometimes they get down to sort of 97 96 cents and things but generally they're a dollar Bitcoin's the most stable. So while Bitcoin's dropped about 50%, pretty much every other altcoin is down 60, 70, 80, 90%. And what's scary is if Bitcoin goes down even lower, those altcoins are really going to get wrecked. So be very, very careful in the altcoin space at the moment. All right, but we can see there were some gains, but again, the market is generally down 3.1%. So what about losses? All right, we can see Maker down 12%, Kasama down 12, Leo down 11, Thor down 12. You know, we got we've definitely got a few losses there. Some gains which is great, but we're in a downwards trending market, so what we need to do is be very very careful. All right, let's go over to the Bitcoin chart. Here's why I am still hesitant. We're still kind of ranging here and if Bitcoin remains super volatile but within this range, Sweet, I'm not too worried about Bitcoin. But what we can see is we've had this downwards trend for a while. So low, pumped up, low, pumped up, low, and these lows keep getting lower. Pumped up, low, pumped up. Now this low was a little bit higher, but it was part of a fake out. Boom, we got this big low. Now this wick came down and almost got down to my uh, concern price which again we can see this is this uh, largest wick down here and we can see this was also sort of resistance once so about really 28,000 so we got down to about twenty eight and a half thousand dollars there which was pretty close but again now look at this resistance line if we break above this line hence where it's green it's bullish but if we're staying under it it's bearish and it became resistance fairly quickly bang so that is why I'm concerned that maybe there's going to be further downside. Now again, I'm not really worried about Bitcoin if it just continues to kind of stay between, you know, again, we'll round this up, 28,000 to sort of 42,000. It's if Bitcoin drops below 28,000 that I'm going to start to be uh, 
not like overly worried. I'm, you know, long term bullish on Bitcoin, but it'll tell me that we're probably in a bear market or at least a much heavier correction because we're probably going down to somewhere around about sort of here, 24,000. There's not really much else that can save us from there. And then even 24,000, there's not a whole lot. It is definitely possible that we come down and retest sort of 20,000. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Absolutely not. I'm just saying that's what I'm looking for. So at the moment, I really wouldn't be touching too many alts unless you're, again, DCing, DCAing into them and you fundamentally believe in them long term. Awesome. Otherwise, they're just getting absolutely punished at the moment. So again, for Bitcoin, I'm not too worried. Right, so today I want to have a look at, let's say you came to the space like a lot of people would have. They would have heard about the hype. They would have, friends would have been telling them, I'm making tons of money in crypto. And it's because, unfortunately, they're all getting in in this. Now, if you got in back here, which is basically last year, then you're still sitting pretty. But a lot of people have probably got in around about here. So... You got into hopefully something good and we're just going to stick with Bitcoin. There's other good cryptos, but you know they pump harder than Bitcoin, but they dump harder than Bitcoin. Hence why I personally think, and it's never financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, that Bitcoin should make up a good portion of your crypto portfolio. For me personally, 30 to 50%, I think should be the minimum. If you want to go way more risky than that and be full degen and all the rest of it, then absolutely go for it. But like Ethereum, I love Ethereum. It was at 40, uh, 4,200, 4,400. It's down at around about 1,900 now. It has, you know, it's dumped harder than Bitcoin. That's what we need to remember. It's going to pump harder than Bitcoin, but it also dumps harder than Bitcoin. Hence why I think Bitcoin needs to make up, yeah, again, 30 to 50% of your portfolio. And then, you know, you can start looking at things like Ethereum, Cardano, and whatever you like. And I like a whole lot of coins. But today we're going to focus on just Bitcoin. Your altcoins are still going to be the same, the process. But if there's something that's brand new and has no history, then geez, I just really hope that they're going to be around. But let's say you got into crypto basically almost right at the top. Let's say about here, 60,000. You bought Bitcoin at 60,000 and it's just dumped. And continues to dump it so you're getting down to here you're probably saying what should I do how can I make money in this space when all I'm doing is getting wrecked number one are you here for just a quick pump to get your money and get out if that's the case you're probably gonna get a whole lot more wrecked unfortunately if you're here because you fundamentally believe in the whole space and you think Bitcoin really is the future of financial uh, the industry and things like that then you might have to just wait around a while. It's all about time. Time in the market, so i.e. being in it for two, three, four, five, six, seven years, beats trying to time the market. None of us can time the market. We really can't. Not even the best of them can time the market. Even they get it wrong on occasions. And they don't need to know exactly when the top is and exactly when the bottom is. They just gotta be somewhere thereabouts and they make a ton of money. So you need to start acting like the smart money. And the smart money will go, all right, Bitcoin was once $63,000. So let's round it up to $64,000, thereabouts. It's currently at $32,000. That's a pretty good buy. In the short term, it may not be the best buy because this may go down to, like I said, possibly $28,000, possibly $24,000. God forbid, maybe we even get back down to 20,000. Completely possible. But dollar cost average in. I can't emphasize enough how good this is. Now, I made, I didn't do this. In 2017, I rode Bitcoin from about 8,000 all the way up to 20,000. And then I rode it all the way back down to 3,200 or whatever it was. But I never sold. I held and I turned $800 into 4,200, into 3,000, uh, sorry, into $330. So I mean, that's, you know, that's a big variant, but I never sold. And that $800 that I invested in 2017, which was basically near the peak when it went to super parabolic, is now currently worth about $5,000. It's because I didn't sell. 
Now, I didn't dollar cost average in, and I'm kicking myself for doing that because I would be sitting pretty right now, but I won't make that mistake again. What I did do is keep an eye on the markets on occasions, and I saw that it was starting to go back up again, and I got some more faith in it late in 2019, started to put a few more dollars in here and there, not a lot, literally only a couple of dollars, and then I saw the big crash in March of 2020, and I knew something just told me this is the time put your money in and I did I put money into the market and so I've been doing quite well since even with the volatility I've been doing really well but what I've also been doing is dollar cost averaging in I dollar cost average in every fortnight I get paid every fortnight so that's how it works for me but we're gonna look at how dollar cost averaging works now if all you had was a hundred dollars to put into Bitcoin you put in at sixty four thousand dollars and you literally can't put in any more money then unfortunately you're stuck. You can sell at a loss or you can hold for generally, it takes about four years to be in profit, but it might not be. It literally might break over $64,000 almost overnight. Now, no guarantees in life, but it might, but that's your option. But let's look at dollar cost averaging. Let's say you've got a job and you've got a, sp a few spare dollars that you can put into the market. How do you kind of beat the system, particularly if this market uh, is so topsy turvy and all over the place. And again, you put in at sixty. You know, again, we, sorry, we were saying sixty thousand, and we're now down at thirty two thousand. Dollar cost average, weekly, monthly, fortnightly. You know, whatever it is, just put a few dollars in. Eventually, dollar cost averaging really, really pays off in every single market, but particularly crypto. But again, if you've gone into some crazy random altcoin that no one's ever heard of and probably won't be here tomorrow. Oh, you know, dollar cost average uh, into Bitcoin would be my personal advice. Again, not financial advice. Uh, we're going to focus on Bitcoin and hopefully say that that's, you know, what you've done. You can do it with all these other coins and they may pay off even bigger. But, you know, just be careful. My personal opinion is have a minimum of 30 to 50% of your portfolio in Bitcoin because it is the most stable still super volatile the upside to bitcoin is amazing but no it's not as good as the altcoins but while those altcoins may may go up 10 times as much as bitcoin they will dump 10 times as much as bitcoin so you put a dollar into bitcoin turn it into two dollars and then it turns back into 30 cents you do that with an altcoin that dollar might turn into ten dollars but then turn into three cents as well so that's what you need to remember. That's a quite drastic example, but that's literally how it works. We need to play, you know, some of the sort of safer game. If you know, you can even call cryptocurrency safe. A lot of people would say it's completely speculative, but I like it and I believe in Bitcoin fundamentally. I'm here for the long term. I'm not here for the short term. All right. So let's have a look how we can dollar cost average in. Right, so I've done something that's fairly easy for most people, you know, in the developed world. In, you know, third world countries, it's going to be a little bit harder. You're going to have to, you know, use lesser amounts. But we've gone $25 per week. That's generally not a whole lot of money for people. Again, depending on your circumstances, it could be. And, I, and I'm not trying to make anyone feel horrible. But, you know, in the developed world, most people have got, you know, probably $25 a week. Or you could go a fortnight or a month. It doesn't really matter. But let's look at $25 a week. And you've done this for the last three years. And we're saying you started back in August 2018. And honestly, that would have been a great time to get in. It really would have because you have missed all the kind of really big dips other than, you know, the pandemic that we had in 2020 in March. So you can see you've put in $25 every week. You've put in $3,925 in total over the last three years. Even today, after the big massive crashes that we've had, your three th let's round it up, $4,000 is worth $17,000. That's pretty good. Think about that. $4,000 is now worth $17,000 after this crash. It was at one stage worth nearly $30,000. So, you know, like a 7X, a 7X, that is unbelievable. So that is what dollar cost averaging does. Now, again, it will work on all these other cryptos if they're going to stick around. That's the, that's the only issue. We don't know. 
there's only a few cryptos that have been around for more than really four or five years. You know, Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, XRP, and uh, Ethereum. Outside of that, most of them are only a year or two old. If that, more likely only a couple of months old. And, you know, the chances of them sticking around, unfortunately, are really, really slim. So just be very, very careful. But this shows you the dollar cost averaging really does work, particularly into Bitcoin. Now, I mean, imagine you bump this up and you're a little bit more fortunate and you got $100 per week. $15,700 into $70,000. And at the peak, well, actually at the peak over here, it was worth $116,000. That is what dollar cost averaging can do for you. But it's hard, particularly when this market's going down, and even worse, if it just continues to go down, you are going to panic. Now let's do this. Let's go again, we'll go back to $25. And we're going to say we started five, four years ago. Oh no, sorry, accumulate four years, starting four years ago. So in December 2017, uh, all right, no, go a little bit less, sorry. Uh, no, basically I started here December 2017. So again, this goes back, but you would have turned $2,000 into... $1,300 uh, over a number of months. So that's the hard part is when it just continues to dump. It's like, oh, this is never going to pay off, never going to pay off. But then slowly it went back up, 1800 Still not quite, you know, the top. And 1700 and we're all over the place. You can see, but eventually we get to about here. Now this is only two years later, but we're back to about even. But we've built a a good base that's what we need to remember this is where the multiplier kicks in and so again we're turning $25 every week gets to a high $5,000 now again here we start to see it decline so we're getting worried oh 4,000 4,000 oh this would have really hurt now again we've turned it into 3,000 we nearly went a 50% correction from kind of the peak over here of sort of 5,000 but we continue to just dollar cost average in. Boom, $43,000. That's $25 a week over four years. You only put in $5,000 in total. At one stage, it was worth $43,000. Now this correction could get a lot worse, but most likely, and again, never financial advice, is imagine what your $25 is gonna be worth in four years time if this is what it done previously now the returns are getting less and less don't get me wrong but not that much less that you're not still going to make unbelievable returns so for anyone watching my channel right now if you're wrecked at the moment and hopefully again you know you you've got into some good coins and you got to make your own mind up what is a good coin if it's honestly some random shit coin i'd be very very careful so Focus on Bitcoin would be my personal advice again, never financial advice. Just constantly DCA. Over time, you're going to kick yourself for not doing it. And I am kicking myself because I got in around about here, rode it to the top, again, put in 800, turned to 4,200, and then by about March, you know, turned into 300 and sort of $30, actually more like a roundabout sort of here, 330. And I didn't keep dollar cost averaging in. I could have been up so much. But I was lucky, I got back into the market sort of roughly around about sort of uh, November, December 2019, not really into it, I was just watching it going, hey, this has gone back up again. And I checked my uh, balance and saw that that money, uh, that 800 that turned into 4,200, that turned into 330, was starting to get back up, we're worth around about sort of $1,000 now. I was like, oh God, it's gone up. When I saw this crash happen, I knew. I was like, I need to put money into this. This is gonna be the perfect time, and so I did. And now, this is what I've been writing since here. So I still missed all of this, and I could have made some good money there, but I got in here, and I've seen this, and now I've seen this. Now it could get worse. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, it could. 
Now here's uh, a method I've come up with to dollar cost average so it hopefully works a little bit better. Now again, just simply dollar cost averaging is the best way. Just continue $25 a week, $50 a week, whatever. But we can also look at ways to try and sort of maximize how that's working. So let's look at if we're in an upwards trending market. So let's say we've got our $25 a week. We're gonna put 20 of that into whatever crypto you like. I'm gonna focus on Bitcoin because I like Bitcoin. It's here to stay. It's the most stable. I can't see it going anywhere. You wanna do this with some other random coin. Uh, the gains will be most likely bigger if it does well, but also the losses will be you know, much more severe. But let's say Bitcoin. All right, I get my $25 every week. I'm putting $20 into Bitcoin. And I'm putting $5 into stable coins. Now the reason I put it into stable coins in an upward trending market, and unfortunately a lot of people are gonna be, it's upward trending, throw it all in. But what about when it dips? A lot of people are like, I've never got any money to buy the dip. $5 into stable coins every week, you are gonna have money to buy the dip. In an upwards trending market, you always wanna have stable coins. You always wanna have stable coins. Number one, they can earn you some yield. And number two, you've got that money there to buy the dips. Now this is the way it should work, so you should always have money. Let's say you have a big 50% correction, and that's a good correction. Now let's say it happened on you know week one. So all you had was $5 to put into uh, you know Bitcoin or whatever, but unfortunately this $20 has been hammered. Don't just throw in that whole $5 put $2.50 in. Now we're working with very small amounts and this is gonna seem silly and you're gonna be like, who's gonna put $2.50 into Bitcoin? You'd be surprised, there'd be a lot of people that would. But you put $2.50 into Bitcoin because it dropped from 60 to 30. Now you don't wait for Bitcoin to drop to, you know, oh, sorry, yeah, 30,000. You don't wait for it to go 29,999 and then throw the other $2.50 in. You need to look at the charts and go, where are lines you know, places where it might come back to. So again, we went from 60,000. We've come back down to 30,000. We've already spoke. There's a level here at 28,000. There's a level here at 24,000. And then there's a level here at, you know, roughly 20,000. These are the kind of things you want to look for. This is where they're probably going to fall back to if they fall. So Bitcoin falls back down to a certain price. You put in another half of your stable coins all the time. That's why we want stable coins. Now this is an upward trending market though. Is This is what we want to do. We want to be putting plenty of our money into it, but there's also a caveat. If whatever you're investing in is at all time highs, it's in price discovery, you may not want to do this. Be very careful. Really, you want to be taking profits. You want to have got into something not at an all-time high. Hence why I think Bitcoin's a great buy right now. 32,000, I'm loving it. And if it goes down to 28,000, it's even better. And if it goes down to 24,000, this is a miracle. Thank you, God, because I'm gonna dollar cost average in. We've already looked what that's gonna happen. Is it gonna hurt for a while? Absolutely, but once it finally starts to go back up, I'm going to be sitting pretty. So in an upwards trending market, and hopefully not when things are at price discovery, this is what I want to do. What about if we're in a downward trending market? Because again, you're going to run out of money you know, to buy the dip. If it's just constantly going down, let's have a look what a downward trending market. Now I'm only putting $15 of my 25 into crypto. And you're probably going to say, why wouldn't you just go all into stable coin? Because I don't know when the bottom is. And I don't want to miss that opportunity. So again, we already looked at what dollar cost averaging does. It works great. So I'll put $15 of my 25 into Bitcoin, no matter sort of you know how much it's dipping, and I'm having $10 into my stable coins. Now, every time it drops to a point price that I have looked at before, I will deploy 50% of my stable coins. Again, not every week do I just keep buying, uh, you know, using up all my stable coins. I'm waiting for it to see levels. But if it doesn't start to come back to these levels and it starts to make it on an upward trend, then, and it's got to be prolonged, it's not just something that happens overnight, I turn back into this and I've got a whole stack of stable coins probably sitting on the sideline. I can go, all right, boom. 
You know, I've been putting $10 into stable coins, the market's turned around. Now I'm only putting $5 into stable coins, but all the stable coins that I built up over that downwards market, I'll deploy 50% of them straight away on the hope that I am correct and we're in an upwards trending market. But only 50% because the market will do what you sort of least expect it to and then it can turn around on the flip of a coin and turn really bearish. So these are things that I sort of follow. Not sort of follow, that I do follow. On occasions I will break these for whatever reason and I'll just see something and I'll think it's too good a price and I'll throw all my DCAing into it for that week. Rarely do I ever do that though. Uh, and again, but it's not that I wouldn't. That's basically what I did here in March. When I saw that crash, I just knew and I basically threw everything I could at it. Not everything I own, everything I could at it. And again, I've been lucky. I've just been riding that wave up. But I'm also riding that wave down. So ladies and gentlemen, anyone watching my channel right now, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Hopefully this will help you. I know it's really, really hard when you get wrecked. I got completely wrecked here. Again, I thought I was on the top of the world watching that 800 turn into 4,200. I thought that was going to turn into 100,000. Then it just fell off a cliff and continued to go down. And I remember looking at it at $330 thinking, thank God it was only $800 and I'm you know, not throwing my life savings away. But unfortunately, I didn't pay attention to the DCA uh, advice. And I'd heard about it back then. I just didn't pay attention. But I really have learned my lesson now. And I will just continue to dollar cost average in. I think cryptocurrencies are the, you know, particularly Bitcoin, but again, it's not financial advice, personal opinion, is the greatest, you know, chance at wealth for this generation. It'll be the greatest wealth transformation that we'll have ever seen. And I think we've still got, you know, another five or 10 years before we really hit that mainstream adoption. Will the gains be less over time? Absolutely. Absolutely they will but they'll still be most likely better than anything else out there with the you know the odd exception you know some you know you randomly get into tesla at you know five dollars and it turns into six hundred dollars uh, congratulations to you not too many people are going to be lucky enough to get on that everyone can get on the bitcoin train at the moment the information is out there uh, and particularly we've got the history that shows you where it's all going all right ladies and gentlemen that's it for me stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on the gain train overall unless you know you're lucky and you've outperformed it well done beware of the weekend retracement that's why i look at this and just go oh you know it looked good for a moment there we haven't broken this and it's friday tomorrow and then saturday sunday we could be coming back down again all right that's it from me i'll see you next time